I just want to be happy. If my family would stop nagging me so much, then I could be happy. If I won the lottery, then I would be happy, and then I'd tithe on it, so God should let me win the lottery. If my job was more life-giving and wasn't such a dread to go to every day, then I would be happy. And if I was happy, then I could be successful. And when I was successful, then I would feel happy. Does this sound like a familiar scenario? Have you heard anybody speak this way? Maybe you yourself have had this sort of thought process or said some of these same things. I want to be happy, but I can't be happy until something changes or someone else changes or until I feel that I have become successful. So let me ask you today, let's start with this question. Are you happy? Are you happy? Now I know that this might be early in the morning and you just rolled over and you're having a hard time waking up. I get that. I'm saying in life, this week, have you been happy? Be self-aware for a moment. Self-reflect. Are you happy? Would others around you say that you are a happy person? Right now, in this moment, as you're watching this, maybe you're not watching this on Sunday morning, you're watching it later, are you happy? I know some of you today don't like it when I get all psychology in my sermons, but you need it. We need to talk about this today, okay? The roots of psychology were primarily focused to discover what's wrong with people. What's wrong with you? Have you ever had that? Have your parents say that when you were growing up? You did something and they didn't know how to deal with you or whatever. What's wrong with you? And so you've learned over the years that there obviously is something wrong with me because when I decided to jump off the couch because I thought I was Superman and landed on my face, that means that there was something wrong with me. Psychology was studying emotional disturbances, psychological illnesses, traumas from your childhood, neurosis, psychosis, mania, mania, and obsession. But late in the 1900s, in the, 19, in the 90s, I'm sorry, a psychologist named Martin Sigelman had a thought. Now, this is a real big idea today, okay? This is the thought that we're going to look at. What if happiness is more than just the absence of sadness? What if happiness is more than, is more than simply the absence of sadness? He suggested, could we have a form of psychology that focused on the positive instead of the negative? And I love that. Because right now it's so easy to be focused on all the negatives. In fact, in the news, all we're seeing is the negatives. Uh, how about some positive news, right? This wasn't really a brand new concept, although it did take off like lightning when he had his paper published and he began this kind of work. So I want to ask you this question. What are you doing right now to pursue happiness and peace in your life? If I told you right now we're going to take the next 30 minutes or so and I'm going to teach a self-help sermon, I'm going to teach you how to grow uh, emotionally and how to grow yourself and do more work to be a better person a lot of you would shut me off. But the studies on psychological happiness says, would you watch for 30 more minutes if I could totally make you 10 times happier in your day-to-day -day life? If I could share a few secrets with you so that you were consistently happy each and every day. And that's what this positive psychology did. I promise you we will get to some Bible verses today. We will make this an official sermon. But I want to set this thing up for you. I really want us to understand that we need to deal with our emotions. 
We need to deal with our feelings. We need to deal with the things that we're focusing on. Martin Sigmund uh, <coughs> actually created precise steps that it would take to achieve happiness in one's life. Believe it or not, it's not individual. It's not based upon just who you are and your circumstances. It's human nature. If each of us do a few simple things, it almost guarantees happiness in our lives. And happiness isn't some big thing out there that has to happen in order for you to be happy. I just, I know, like, I watch people who play the lottery every single week thinking that if they just won that million dollars, life would be happy. No, you'd be a miserable millionaire. And more importantly than that, you'd spend all the money and be more miserable when it was all gone. The truth to happiness is right in front of you. It's not something you pursue. I'm not pursuing this end goal called happiness, called success. It's something that you do. It's not what you pursue. It's what you do. Or should I better say, it's a bunch of little things every day that you do that will lead you to happiness. Most of us, have the path to true happiness backwards. We believe that once we become successful, or once we get out of debt, or once we become rich, or once our wife stop nagging us, or once our kids grow up and they're out of the house, then I can be happy. But that's not how happiness works. That's not how it works. That's it's completely backwards. Once you do what it takes to raise your everyday level of happiness, then you'll become successful. When you choose every single morning when you wake up to be a happy person, you will eventually step into success. You'll become healthier I think about this a lot. How much work is it to be a nasty person? And we think that it's easy, like, I'm just in a bad mood, so everybody better get out of my way. That's actually a lot of work. And, and, and we think to ourselves, someone who, who deals with anger or, or, or is nasty, they think to themselves, oh, my God, I have to do all these things to be a nice person. I have to smile, and I have to bring people coffee. And No, you don't. You have to do one thing. Stop being a jerk. That's it. Just stop it. Stop being nasty. It's actually a lot of work to have a frown on your face. And in fact, being that nasty, being an angry person is actually diminishing your health levels. But when you choose to be happy, it increases your health. You'll find the relationships that you're looking for when you're happy. The more you raise your own happiness level, the more likely you'll start achieving all those things that you've been dreaming about achieving. Be happy. Check this out. Write this down if you're taking notes. Big idea. It's going to come up on the screen right now. Be happy. Then the reason will appear. Woo. Yeah, but I, don't, I have nothing to be happy about. Well, choose to be happy, and then the reason to be happy will appear. It'll appear, appear before you. Now, that's biblical. That's, that's a biblical statement right there. And I know sometimes that we don't think it is, but that's totally biblical. Ready? Proverbs 23, 7. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. When I choose to be happy, I'm happy. When I choose to be happy, I'm successful. Good stuff, good stuff. I choose to feel the way I feel. No one can make you feel anything emotionally. No one can make you cry. No one can tick you off. You chose to respond to that situation that way. I choose happiness 
even when there's no reason to be happy. My choice to be happy will create the reason to be. That's so good. Happiness isn't the end. Happiness isn't the sum. It's not the result. Happiness is the beginning. It's to start with an attitude of happiness. But we have to change our thinking. We have to change our thinking. We have to get out of the victim mentality. I'm not happy because everybody else is nasty. No, be the leader. Choose to lead your life. Choose to be happy. Changing thinking will lead to changed behavior. Romans 12, 2. Check this out. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to do the will of God. Get that? Then you will fulfill the success. Then you will do the things that God has dreamed of you doing. When you refuse to be like everybody else, refuse to conform to the pattern of the world, and renew your mind to the word of God, to good news, then you will test and approve God's will, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Changing your thinking is where it starts. Okay, Pastor Mike, you got me hooked. I get it. But what are those habits? What are those precise steps to becoming happy? Well, let me pause for a second and say, don't be upset at me when you hear the answer. Again, I told you it's not one huge thing. It's not like I can give you a Bible verse today and when you read it, all of a sudden, it's going to radically change everything about you. And tomorrow, you will forever be the happiest person in the world, skipping down the street, having a lollipop in your mouth. It's not going to be that. It's not going to be an overnight change. After all, you've been living the way you've been living your entire life. For me, it's 41 years. If I've been doing something for 41 years... It's hard to believe that one day it's just going to change everything and I'm going to live completely differently. It's going to take some time. Okay, change may not occur overnight, but it will be a process. So today I want to give you a list of five happy habits. If you're taking notes, write that down. It'll come up in your chat room right now. Five happy habits that if you begin to do them right now, you'll be living a happier life in as little as 21 days, 21 days, three weeks, consistently doing these things. The faster, I'm sorry, that's faster than a diet program. Most diet programs are 12 weeks. Get that body sh fat shed, get your body back into uh, ketosis or whatever it is to, 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 to begin to burn that weight. Three weeks of these emotional healthy habits will make you a happier person. Are you ready? Number one, each morning, write down three things that you're grateful for. Each morning, write down three things that you're grateful for. And it can't be the same three things every day. I'm thankful for God. I'm thankful for oxygen. I'm thankful for my kid. No. New things each day. Why? What will this do? It will train your brain to search your life to find the things that are positive. It gets your brain working. It, it, it's, it's working on your mind to say, what are the positive things in your life? Because it's so easy to fixate on the negatives. Now, I can feel somebody already. You lost me, Pastor Mike. I ain't doing it. I ain't sitting down journaling, writing stuff down. Okay. For you, specifically, that person who's feeling that way, like, I'm not writing down three things I'm grateful for every day. Okay. Then don't be happy. Don't be happy. But don't you dare steal someone else's happiness because of your laziness. Get out of their way. Get out of their way. You're, you're part of the problem. 
Because we need to be better. We need to be better every day in our lives. Take some time and reflect. What are you grateful for? 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Hebrews 12.28. Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And thus, let us set us uh, let us set offers to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe that's amazing he's saying right there be grateful for this kingdom of God that we've been given psalm 118:1 oh give thanks to the lord for he is good for his steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his steadfast love endures forever. Out of my distress, I call on the Lord, and the Lord answers me and sets me free. Be grateful. And then write them down. What am I happy about today? What am I grateful for today. Number two, this is another hard one. Journal for two minutes a day about one positive experience you had in the past 24 hours. Journal, write in a notebook for two minutes a day about one positive experience you've had in the past 24 hours. Write it down. Write down every detail you can remember. Why? This allows your brain to re-experience the moment. It lets you live it again as you sit there and author it on a piece of paper. Habakkuk 2.2, and the Lord answered me. He said, write the vision, make it plain on tablets so that you may run with it who reads it. Write down your own remembrance. Write down the vision. I want to have these positive things happening in my life over and over and over again. So write it down so that you can read it and that you can run with it. And then take the next step. Romans 10, 17. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Read what you wrote out loud so you hear yourself saying it. Let that faith come back into your ears. I'm going to live these positive moments every day in my life. So write down the positive experience so you can see it in your own handwriting. There's a power that comes in that. And then read it out loud to yourself, and this will encourage you. And this is how faith will be built within you to continue these happy habits. Number three, meditate daily. Meditate daily. And I'm not talking about some weird yoga meditation where you're going to like be caught up into the third heaven and depart from this earth. I'm not talking about anything like that. Nothing fancy, nothing weird. Just stop all activity and focus on your breathing. Focus on the breath coming in and focus on the breath going out for two minutes. This trains your brain to focus on what you want it to focus on and not being distracted by the negativity in your environment. I've heard a lot of people say, Pastor Mike, I've tried to pray, but every time I sit down to pray, I get so distracted. Then practice meditating, this, this, this form of meditating. Focus on your breathing, your breath in and the breath out, and only focus on that. This will allow you to say, when things are happening all around you, I'm not going to focus on the negativity. I'm going to focus on what God's word says. Joshua 1 8 says this This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you can do it. So that you can do all the things that were written down, but you've got to meditate on it. And then what will be the end result? Ready? What we would call happiness. Then your way will be prosperous and you will have good success. It's right here in the Word of God. This is what we wanted all along. I want to be successful. I want to be happy. It starts here. I've got to focus on the right things. 
Psalm 119.15, David says, I will meditate on your precepts, and I will fix my eyes on your ways. This is an overlooked practice that I think we have in society today, is to just shut down all the distractions and focus on the good. All right? Now, that's a whole other sermon that we could preach about the battlefield of the mind and distractions and all that. We're not going to get into that today. But I'm just saying right now, we need to take control of our thoughts, take control of the brain activity, and focus it on what God has called us to focus it on. Number four, there's a list of five habits. We're on number four. Do a random act of kindness over the course of your day. Do a random act of kindness over the course of your day. So to make this simple, here's a suggestion. Write a short email at the start of each day praising someone for something great that you've seen them do. This could be a text message. Hey, I saw you shining when you did this. Hey, you encouraged me when you did this. A a, a simple act of kindness. It could be helping somebody do something. It could be opening the door for somebody. But each day, go out of your way to do a random act of kindness. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 says, love is patient, love is kind, love is kind, it's kind, it's nice, it smiles. You cannot say that you love God, but then you're nasty to everybody around you. Then you don't have God's love. Colossians 3, 12, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. He says, put these things on. Put these behaviors on your life. Ephesians 4.32, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. If you want to be happy, be nice. Be nice to people. And number five, I'm going to lose a bunch of people on this one. Ready? Exercise for 15 minutes a day. Exercise for 15 minutes a day. Simple cardio. Even a brisk walk has a powerful antidepressant impact. In fact, studies show that a brisk walk can actually... uh, combat depression better than antidepressant medication. Maybe what you need right now is exercise. You're feeling depressed. You're feeling anxious. You're feeling overwhelmed by things that are happening. Go for a walk. What did we, what did we know when, when our parents got into an argument and one went for a walk? I mean, what did they know that we don't know? Maybe they needed some exercise to get out of that depressed state. Okay, let me share a sorely misquoted scripture with you. Are you ready? Because you think you would think by me sharing the scripture it would undo my point, but it does not. First Timothy four eight, for physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. So he's talking about the present life. And he's talking about eternal life in this statement. So why does bodily exercise only profit little? Because bodily exercise only benefits you in this life, not eternal life. But it will benefit you for the 120 years you're alive. Hopefully. 120 years. That's how old I'm going to be. I'm back to 120-year-old G still moving around with skinny jeans. 120, white beard, bald head. I don't know. This translation says bodily exercise profits little. And so the obese church people were like, see, it only profits little. Don't waste any time, but read your Bible. But you're nasty. Let, let, let's, let's use the little. The little it's talking about is this lifetime. In, in relation to eternity, this lifetime is little. But it will benefit you while you are alive, okay? 
Get some exercise. Now, I've shared the five points, the five happy habits to, I mean, five, the five happy habits. Now, there could be more. You could add different things to this to be happy, obviously. But studies show that if you did these five things consistently, these little things throughout your life, you will be a happier person. And I can just feel all the overachievers who just watch this. I'm going to do all five of these right now. Gina, order me my meal plan. Get me that Weight Watchers. I get it. I get it. But don't start all these at once. Don't start all these at once. Start with one. And let it become a habit. So maybe it is those words of affirmation or it's um, an, an act of kindness email or an act of kindness text message. Maybe that's where you want to start. And just do that every day. Let people know that you appreciate them, that you're thinking about them, whatever. Every day. And then do that for 21 days. And then maybe add the next component to it. Maybe you want to do two of them at, 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 you know, start at one time. Maybe you're going to start exercising for 15 minutes a day, and you're going to write down what you're grateful for. Whatever that is. But don't try to just, oh, I'm going to do these five things, every, because you're not. You're not going to do all five every day, and then, and then they're going to get scattered, and then you're going to fall out of practice. Here's my heartbeat. Let's grow together. Let's grow spiritually and emotionally. We started our Wednesday night Bible study this week. And if you missed it, go back and watch it. Get set up for where we're going. Uh, it, it is the basis, the premise for the rest of the classes moving forward. And, and, and that's where we're going to be growing spiritually. We're going to get some meat of the word in that teaching. But let's also be growing emotionally together. As we close out talking about these happy habits that lead to success, I'd like to add one last challenge. Something that is dear to me that I believe will radically change your life. Ready? Read 10 pages of a book every day. No, not the same 10 pages. But read 10 pages of a self-help book, a business book. Uh, I'm talking more than just a romance novel. And yes, I'm talking to all the men. Stop reading them romance novels. They're not taking you anywhere. <laughs> a self-help book, a self-improvement book, a book that is going to lead you towards your goals. Maybe it's a financial book, whatever it is. If you just read 10 pages a day in one month, you could have read a 300-page book which is what most of the, the books that I'm reading are, about 300, 365 pages in one of those books. If you just did 10 pages a day. Our staff, I challenge them that if they would read 24 books from January to December, that they would win a prize. Uh, and we put that challenge out to them. Now, that's a lot of books, 24 books. That, you'd have to read a minimum of 20 pages a day of a 300-page books to get to 24 books. But if you just did 10 pages a day, you would read 12 books in one year. Grow with us. Change your thinking. Take control of your life. Uh, God told Joshua when he became a leader, be strong and very courageous for the Lord your God is with you. It's so easy right now in the times that we're in for everybody to tell you how you're supposed to feel and how you're supposed to act and how you're supposed to respond. Take control of your life. Take control of your destiny and where you're going through the word of God. Lord, what do you have for me? Lead me, guide me, direct me, help me to be happy and full of life. Let's pray today. Father, we thank you for this time in your word that we could uncover biblical truths that will lead us to a happy, happier and more fulfilled life. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for being our comforter, our helper, our guide. Lord, we thank you that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path directing us and leading us. 
We submit to you, Holy Spirit, for your direction, for your insight. I pray right now that we are encouraged by the word of God today. It is lifting us. It is literally breathing life into our very soul today. I thank you that everything we set our hands to would prosper and be successful. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you. See you next week.